I went to Berkeley High, and it was like, I was, you know, I was the same age as Uno, and we went to like middle school together, and um, it was like me, the pack, and the cataracts were all at Berkeley High at the same time, so it was like a crazy, that was when I was like, you know, like 14 or 15, and like, you know, everybody was just, everybody had like a home studio set up, and it was just inspiring that you could just, you know, save up and cop a mic, and then upload some music to MySpace, and you could just, you know what I mean, like, make a mixtape and just, like, share it with everybody at school and shit. What was it like when the pack suddenly got, you know, got my vans on and it started to sort of blow up around the country? It was crazy, man, because I, I, I remember, you know, going from, like, Uno sitting next to me in class and, and all that. And they, you know, they had their buzz. Like, you go to any party, you know, and, and, and the booty bounce bopper and all that shit would play. But, you know, from, from when vans came suddenly everything changed and you know they weren't they weren't in class anymore they were on MTV and I think that whole thing kind of kind of inspired me in a sense to know that you know like this really was possible you know you could go from MySpace to touring the world you know with some music did you know Little B during this time yeah they like through through a couple of friends like I didn't know him as well but um but I bumped into Bass God at uh at the Elmore last night and it's always a very positive, enlightening moment whenever you bump into Bass God, very rare. Well, you know, I mean, Lil B went from, you know, just one of the members of the pack, and then now Lil B really kind of went left, left field and kind of took it to a whole different direction. Nah, I mean, he, he, always, he always had a certain, like, star power to him, though. You know what I mean? Like, Lil B was always kind of special. But, you know, it was definitely unexpected for the left turn to be that sharp. You know what I mean? But, no, nah, I mean, I think he's an example of, you know, this age we live in in the Internet of somebody like him, you know, with his cult following, you know, and, and, you know, you just see things going in that direction. You have Internet stars more than you have, you know, the mainstream, like, superstars dominating the whole world via TV and radio. You have people like Lil B changing the game via the Internet. You know what I mean? How much of that sort of independent like you know I'm not so much concerned about having a radio single I don't really need you know stuff and rotation on MTV you know do you really apply to your own career to just okay I'm gonna just do it myself have my own fan base and develop that over the internet no I think that's it man I mean that's the world we live in you don't need I mean MTV doesn't even exist anymore like that you know I mean you can get your video on MTV jams or something but it's not you know it's never going to be what it used to be anymore. So it's now it's like if you can can make your music and, you know, strategically like get it to the people via, you know what I mean, like YouTube and all the social media and, and make something that resonates with people, you know what I mean, and start to go viral online, it's, it's so much more powerful because that's where the people are now, you know what I mean, and that's where, that's where shit moves and that's where shit lives is like, you know, it all starts online. It's crazy. I mean, how did you transition from just sort of being someone who, who raps in their home studio to turning into an actual business? Nah, I mean, I, I still rap in my home studio. I hate big studios, man. They give me the creeps. I, um, this whole new album that we're just finishing right now, we recorded in, you know, hotel rooms or on the back of the tour bus or whatever. We just set up shop wherever. And that's always been it. It's been a very, you know, DIY, like, homemade approach to the music. It's just organic. It's, you know, it's authentic. And then, you know, from the business side, it's always been like, all right, you can make, you know, whatever music you want to make. You can make the greatest song in the world, but if you're not pairing that music with a strategy on how to get it to the people, that doesn't mean anything. And I was just like, you know, I need to, I need to make a living out of this. You know what I mean? Like, I need to, I need to eat. I need to live. So, you know, we were always just focused on behind the scenes and the marketing and the strategy and the building the brand, you know.